Hello, in this video I'm going to work through a number of interesting limit problems and just show you how you can use algebra and some uh, just tinkering around to uh, make difficult limit problems work out for you. Um, we're going to start out with just uh, your basic uh, uh, algebraic simplification. Uh, this is probably uh, A little bit underwhelming for starters, but I want to just um, uh, work from the from the bottom up. Uh, so we'll start with this limit. Uh, if x is going to zero, you can see that if you put in zero here in the bottom, you get zero. Also, zero up top would give you four squared minus sixteen, which is also zero. Uh, so this would be indeterminate if you tried to evaluate this um, by just plugging in zero. Um, I'm going to point out that the function itself is not defined at zero, and if, as far as the limit is concerned, that doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just work through the uh, algebra on the top. Uh, if you FOIL this out, you get 16, uh, you get plus 8x plus x squared, and then minus 16. So I used FOIL you get this, minus 16, you can see that the 16 and the minus 16 can cancel out. So as x goes to 0, you've got 8x plus x squared over x. Still, if you plugged in uh, 0 currently, you get 0 over 0, so we need to keep working. Um, this is a, a, you could say, a, what's called a discontinuous point, but because we're going to be able to factor out an x from the top and cancel out that x that's troublesome on the bottom. Um, and um, so we've got just an x taken out of the top remaining an 8x plus, um, sorry, an 8 plus 1x on top and then x on bottom. And uh, uh, then these cancel out and just get 8 plus x over 1, which is just 8 plus x. And uh, finally, you can evaluate this by putting in 0, and you get 8. Uh, so that's that limit. Uh, this, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but at x equals 0, this function has a removable discontinuity. Um, so that, that's a term that you're going to see uh, in the future. A, a removable discontinuity is a discontinuity that you can basically fix by doing algebra. And uh, if you were to look at the graph of this, uh, which I'm just going to kind of draw here loosely. Uh, here's 8. Uh, and uh, the line 8 plus x would look like this. It would go have a slope of 1 Imagine that's a slope of 1. And notice the big open circle uh, right there. That indicates that at x equals 0, this point is undefined. So the 0 is not part of the domain for this function. Uh, but this is uh, the graph. If you were to graph this original function, that's what you would see. It's kind of surprising that you would end up graph, you know, put in this big rational function and you get a linear equation. But that's what it, what it um, factors down to be. So it's just a straight line with the uh, exception, with the caveat that there's a little hole there. Okay, let's try another one. Okay. Um, so I want to just mention on tape here that this is a fact which you should know. That's a fact. Uh, later in the course, when you learn, learn about L'Hopital's rule, you can show that this is true. But for now, you just have to take my word for it and, and accept it. Um, if you take the AP test, this fact will come up uh, on the multiple choice section. Very likely that'll come up. Uh, so anyway, knowing that, uh, if you have something 
such as this. Um, we can kind of use that, use this fact to, to, to make some progress. Now, if you put in zero currently, you get zero plus sine of zero, zero, all over zero. Um, one property of limits is you, if there's a single item in the denominator, you have the option of breaking it up into two separate limits. And then you have uh, this limit. So uh, you've got one limit here and a whole separate limit right here. And x over x is 1. So as x goes to 0, if all the x's have canceled out, we don't care what x is. So that is just 1. And then here is sine x over x and is uh, looked at and x goes to 0. This is just 1 plus 1. So that limit is 2. Uh, so you can see how just a little bit of algebra breaking this up and knowing that fact helps you kind of deal with something that otherwise looks kind of looks kind of difficult. Okay. The next example I want to do is uh, one that involves a compound fraction. And uh, one thing about compound fractions that is almost always true beyond just limits, but in general, is you are often way better off if you add the fractions together. So, oh, sorry. Here I've got 1 over 2 plus x minus a half. That's on top of the fraction, big fraction, and then at the bottom of the big fraction is x. So what I want to do here before I do anything it's just combine these together. We've got subtraction, so if I get a common denominator, I can make that happen. Um, so a common denominator with 2 plus x and 2 would just be 2 times 2 plus x, uh, 2 over 2 times 1 over 2 plus x. And uh, then over here, you're lacking the 2 plus x. And um, end up as x goes to 0. Uh, on the bottom of the top portion, we've got 2 over 2 times 2 plus x. And then up top, we've got 2 minus 2 plus x. I'm just going to kind of put that in its own brackets. And downstairs, I'm going to write this as x over 1, kind of in its own brackets also. Um, so you can see here that we can simplify the top, the, the fraction, the numerator, some more. 2 minus 2 is 0, so those 2's cancel out. Negative x makes negative x over 2 times 2 plus x. And this is now division of fractions. So we have limit as x goes to 0 of uh, negative x over 2 times 2 plus x. And we're going to flip and multiply. We're going to take the reciprocal of this and change division of fractions to multiplication of fractions. And we get limit as x goes to 0, these x's reduce to negative 1 and 1. They reduce out. And uh, now uh, you are able to evaluate the sum of direct substitution. 0 can plug in here, and you just get minus 1 over 4. So that's a very common type of limit that looks kind of hard to start out with, but uh, isn't as hard as you might think. Um, so one other just kind of standard type of limit you'll see is uh, just the type that you have to uh, have to factor. Uh, so let me just kind of run through one more like that. x squared minus 3x plus 2 x squared minus 4. This is going to kind of touch into the discontinuity uh, talk uh, Again, so I want to just do this problem so you can kind of uh, hear some more comments about types of discontinuities. Uh, so the top and the bottom are both quadratics. I'm going to factor them. Uh, right now, if I put in 2, obviously, the bottom is, is discontinuous. 
So we're going to do x minus 2 times x minus 1 up top. That's how I factor that top. And then on bottom, we have the difference of two squares. So we have x minus 2 times x plus 2. Uh, so hopefully at this point, you can kind of see where things are going. But think about, I want to just kind of come over here and talk about the domain of my function. The domain is x cannot be 2 or negative 2. So the domain x cannot be 2 or negative 2. However, uh, notice that the x minus 2's cancel out, and you end up with limit x is going to 2. We have x minus 1 over x plus 2. And so now you can plug, it in, plug in your 2, and you get 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 2, which is uh, 1 over 4. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so eventually we could plug in 2 after we originally could not. That makes this a removable discontinuity. <coughs> Notice that um, the negative 2, even at the end, still cannot be plugged in. It still would make this undefined. That means that there is no algebra that makes this uh, negative 2 possible to plug in. So this is called a non-removable discontinuity.